Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. And today we are gonna be learning how to do a gravity bleed on Shimano brakes. It smells like molasses to me. Oh. It's definitely some sort of gel. <laughs> I just can't tell what flavor. And you're, oh, yep, she's going Chocolate. for it. Chocolate. Chocolate gel. For this task, you will need Shimano Hydraulic Mineral Oil, a basic disc brake bleed kit, which includes this little cup and stand, a hose, and a syringe, which we are actually not going to use, shop towel, Allen keys, adjustable wrench, a paint pen, brake cleaner. You will also need a brake bleed block. Say that 10 times fast and comment your time in the comments. So how do you know if you need to bleed your brakes? <laughs> I actually know the answer to this question. Um, if your brakes are, if your brakes are pulling all the way to the bar or need a lot of pumping up before they feel good, so that means you have to do this a couple times before you get a good nice pull on it, or if after you've been descending for a while, your brakes start pulling all the way to the bar or pulling really inconsistently, that probably means it's time to bleed your brakes. If your brakes are rubbing, you probably need to center them, so here's a video for that. If your brakes are squawking or you don't have great power at the beginning of a descent, but it gets better as you descend, that probably means you need to refinish your brake pads and rotors. And we have a video about that right up there. So if that's your problem, pause this video, go watch that one. If your problem sounds more like what we discussed at the beginning, stay here. We're gonna show you how to bleed a brake. Our friends have officially figured out that we need bikes with problems to film this channel. So you might remember this bike from our fourth lower service. It is back for a brake bleed. <laughs> and because Susie's getting free bike maintenance, we're gonna roast her for the fact that there's uh, like some sort of goo all over the bike. We think it might be like a gel. Like... What does it smell like? It smells like molasses to me. Huh. It's definitely some sort of gel. <laughs> I just can't tell what flavor. And you're, oh, yep, she's going Chocolate. for it. Chocolate. Chocolate gel. So we talked to a Shimano race mechanic about how to bleed brakes properly, and this is the method they told us. He said that the syringe method usually works, but can sometimes cause problems, and it's harder. So this is what they taught us, this is what we use, and our brakes work amazing. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> All right, we got the wheel off, so we are going to next pull out the pads because you really do not want brake fluid, yeah, mineral oil on your brake pads. Gonna install the brake block. ASAP. Well, you actually can't install the brake block yet. You can see the pistons are pushed out there and that's not enough space. So Sid is gonna use a tire lever. Plastic Push tire piston, lever, yeah. right? You don't wanna stick a metal. Well, you can use a metal one, but you just wanna be careful because if you're not careful pushing the pistons out, you can actually like crack them slightly. I'm scared. No, you'll be fine. You just wanna push in the center of the piston. So can you explain a little bit how you're pushing the pistons out? Basically just sort of pulling back as a lever. So you're levering it against yeah. the caliper. Do you think I need to push harder? If it's not moving, then yes, you need to push harder. I mean, it has moved, but then it pops right back. It will never be it totally flush. Better. I think that's better. Let's see. Yeah, if it'll fit, then that will be okay. Let's find <laughs> out. Like... Your issue is not the pistons. Your issue is the fact that there's not space between oh, the we're frame gonna and the brake. That's why you always have your Allen keys ready to go. Nope. Nope. Oh, and nope. <laughs> what the actual heck? How am I missing? Is it none of these? No. This one. Okay. <laughs> if you have four piston brakes and you're doing this, the process is exactly the same, except you have to push all four of the pistons in, not just two of them. There she goes. Yeah, I think I was actually hitting the frame and I didn't realize it. Gotcha. Right. Whoops. <laughs> Overshot. Let's try that again. Gentle, gentle. And then we need our little screw back. And the screw doesn't have to be tight because it's literally just keeping the block from falling out. The next thing you're going to do is make sure that the caliper is lower than the lever. So caliper is lower than the lever, but you also want to make sure that all of the hose goes down because we are gravity bleeding it. So now you can see the lever is up here and then it goes down, it goes into a frame, comes back out, it goes sort of flat and up a little bit here, but I think that's gonna be all right. So Sid is now going to mark where that 
break is so that we can get it back to the right position. And that's what the paint pen is for. And now when we put it back, we'll just line it up with that. This is especially important if you're working on someone's bike other than your own. The reason Sid is moving this lever is so that she can make sure that it is parallel to the ground because you want this bolt right here to be as at the highest point so that everything is below that. So this is the little cup that comes with your Shimano bleed kit. You do want to be pretty generous with how much mineral oil you put in the cup because really the one way you can really go wrong with this task is to run out of oil and basically suck air into your brake line. You do not want to do that. As Sid pulls out the bolt, she's going to make sure that the O-ring is on the screw because otherwise you can accidentally end up with two O-rings on here, and then it comes off with the cup, and then you lose an O-ring and that's bad, because the cup has its own O-ring. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this cup in carefully, try not to get mineral oil everywhere. At this point, if your brakes aren't super bad, you can go ahead and do a lever bleed, which if we've shot that video, the link will be right up there. Oh, that's good, it doesn't screw on very tight. It doesn't screw on very tight, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna pop this puppy out. Yeah, and so to pop it out, you wanna just, no, no, don't pull straight because then it will go splash everywhere. Rotate it around in a circle, like the whole thing. Yep, keep rotating, keep rotating and pulling lightly. There we go. Sid is going to release that bleed valve and basically she just has to unscrew it slightly. But first, she's gonna attach this hose because otherwise you will get brake fluid all over your caliper and you really don't want to do that if you don't have to. You're going to want to have something to catch your brake fluid in because it's kind of gross. So that's why I had that tape there because you can't do that and the cup at the same time. Okay right yeah and I have to do this all by myself because we came up with a stupid idea for a YouTube channel. <laughs> then you're going to release that this guy. bleed port like between a quarter and a half a turn. Is it immediately going to start oozing out on me? Mm, a little bit, but it shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Yeah, good. So she loosened it and then she'll unscrew it by hand a little bit. Oh my God, that looks like sludge. Whoa. So now it's going to start funneling through. This is how gross that stuff looks right now. Sid is up there making sure that she never runs out of fluid because as she mentioned, if you let it run out of fluid, then you start sucking air into the system, and that's the entire point you of... You kind of need to do the whole thing again. <laughs> yeah. And what we're going to do is watch down here until the fluid coming out stops being black. We want it to be pink, which is the color it's supposed to be. Wow. Guys, this is intense. I've, I've seen some gross brake fluid. This has taken it to a whole new level. <laughs> We're getting pretty clean now. I can still see some black in there. We're gonna let it go a little bit longer because really, if you're gonna do this, you might as well do it properly. Obviously we're doing a rear brake here. With the rear brake, you need to be even more careful to be watching the amount of fluid you have here because that line takes a lot of fluid. When you do the front brake, you can pretty, it's pretty much just gonna be like about a cup of fluid. Okay, that's looking way cleaner. You guys can see that it looks nice and pink down here. So Sid's gonna close the bleed port. I'm gonna move the bag and then you wanna okay. hold the hose straight up in the air yeah, so yeah, that yeah. it stops dripping and twist it as you twist the bleed port. Okay, I think that might be tight enough that okay. I can take the hose so off. So now, wait, don't take the hose off. Okay. This is a trick, this is a trick. Cover the hose with your finger at the top of it. Okay. Then pull it off. So once again, if you pull kind of to the side instead of straight up, dump the oil. And then you're gonna just lock down the bleed port. And you want the bleed port tight, but you don't wanna like force it. Yeah, that's good. Now that your bleed port is closed, you have to plunger the top thing. So let's go up there. And at this point, should I pulse the lever? Yeah, at this point, just pump the lever a couple times, just in case there it are any seems bubbles. Seems pretty good, actually. Well, I got like a little baby bubble A little there. baby bubble, okay. That just makes sure that there's no bubbles in the lever. So then you put the plunger in and then unscrew that guy. You should be able to see fluid right around the edge. You can see there's like a little bubble of it. And then as Sid puts that screw in, she's gonna hold the towel right next to it so that any excess comes out onto her towel, not all over the lever. If you have gotten oil all over your lever, you are fine to just like spray the lever down. That's no, not a problem. But we did okay. Yeah, you did a good job. This is Sid's favorite part of the entire process. She gets to spray literally everything with brake cleaner. First, I'm gonna take the block out. The reason you do this is your brakes will just not be happy if they have mineral oil all over them. I'd say one of the great ironies of brakes is that the stuff that goes inside it to make it go 
is it the absolute worst stuff to get on the rotors or the pads. Come on. Let me make sure I'm pointing it at that and not at my eyes. Whoa. Wow, that smells strong. Get that all nice and clean, 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 clean. This is a great time to replace your pads if you need to while you're at it or sand them down if you've been getting some squawking or unpleasant noises. Again, we have a video much more detail on that. That's backwards. In what way? I haven't even had a chance um, to put it anywhere. The spring has a right and a left. The spring has a right and a left. Yep. Okay. And you just want to make sure you don't touch the pads as much as possible, okay. especially because your hands probably have some mineral fluid on them. Probably over there. Yep. I've been putting everything on that shelf. <laughs> this is the part where we shame Sid for putting all of the tools on the not tool shelf so that we'll never find them again. Sorry, I'm not sorry. Won't apologize to nobody. And then we'll obviously have to recenter our brake. Once you have your wheel back on, you're going to pump up the lever because the pistons need to go back in. And what you'll find is sometimes, especially if you had worn brake pads in there, your lever will feel kind of weird still, which means that you just need to do an additional lever bleed. This is actually feeling pretty good. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our levers back where they go and which we have conveniently marked. Here's how to do a gravity bleed on Shimano brakes in one minute. Remove the brake pads and push the pistons into the caliper. Remove the caliper from the frame or fork. Rotate the bike so that the brake line has a downhill path from the lever to the caliper. Mark the lever position, then rotate the lever so that it is parallel to the ground. Remove the bleed screw and attach the funnel with at least one inch of brake fluid. Then remove the plunger. Attach the hose and something to catch the oil to the bleed port and open the bleed port one quarter turn. Making sure there is always fluid in the funnel, flush the line until the oil that is exiting is clean. Then close the bleed port. Pump the lever to make sure there's no air in it, then insert the plunger, remove the funnel, and install the bleed screw. Clean the lever and caliper and reinstall the pads and wheel. Pump the lever to reset the pistons and recenter the brake caliper. Return the lever to its original position. Mm -hmm.